Hello, it's the Friday Talkie. What the hell to talk about today? It's actually kind of difficult. I'm struggling with the Friday Talkie at the moment because I'm actually quite distracted and gaming and retro gaming is not my main focus just lately, for the past couple of weeks. And why is that? Driving lessons. Some of you, a lot of you, maybe, definitely some of you know that I'm having driving lessons at the moment. Uh, I've had three and it's going, it's going really well actually. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, the next lesson is going to be like driving in heavy traffic. I've done all the uh, uh, three-point turn, the parallel parking, um, pulling into a, uh, reversing into a parking space in a car park. Uh, you know, all, all a lot of the basics. I haven't done reversing around a corner yet. I haven't done an emergency stop yet. Um, but you know, just lots of pooting around town going around the housing estates doing the slow stuff and that was kind of getting boring so he said okay let's do something a bit faster and we're getting into heavy traffic and traffic lights and roundabouts and blah 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 yeah um apparently progressing quite quickly i i don't know what would be quick and what wouldn't but we seem to have done a lot in a short amount of time which is cool but i do find that it's like i have a lesson and then i spend the next several days just thinking about it and processing it in my head and when it comes to the next lesson, I find I'm actually better at it, having not been doing it, but just like absorbing what I'd learned in the last lesson. I guess that's the normal way, and how other people do it, I don't know. It just surprised me how it worked. But I do find I'm thinking about it a lot, and not thinking about video games. Though I have been playing some Gran Turismo. <laughs> yeah. I've got to the uh, four-hour... Nürburgring endurance race and that's a bit heavy going. Uh, trying to stay in the lead on that circuit is not easy. Even in, I was using the Zonda R and I couldn't keep the lead because I just crashed too much. Haven't done any of that in the real world. Anyway, so that's been a distraction but I do have some gaming related stuff to talk about. Um, well, I've not actually watched an awful lot of other people's videos this week. And that, a lot of the time, is where I, I get topics to talk about. I see what other people are talking about and I think about it and maybe put another, my own slant on it or maybe just respond to a tag. But I haven't been watching many. Partly because I've, I've been doing this. It's good. I got it from the instructor. I'll stop talking about that now. Um... But I have seen some of the, uh, I, it's like, if I don't have a lot of time, I scan through and see what's been uploaded and what the titles are. So even if I don't get to watch the videos, I know what's happening to some degree. It's like scanning the headlines on the newspaper or, or, or the little ticker thing that goes along on the TV screen when the news is on. Something like that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> there is... That this is kind of combining two topics that have been discussed into one because there was one that was um, I, I saw this on um, Marlin Lee did a video of yesterday um, yeah if your house is burning down what one game would you grab and save I don't know who started the tag. Did Marlon Lee start the tag? I haven't actually watched the video yet. I just saw the title and thought that's an interesting one. And I, I had to think about it and consider doing a sort of a direct response to that. And it occurred to me, no, I wouldn't just grab one game. What I would grab is um, this and this because in this I keep all of my games for this Game Boy Advance SP and my entire SP collection they're like one easy grab um, why? because this is uh, there's another tag going around which is um, show us your retro game compilations or something like that and I don't know who started that one either you see, I got the when I got the Game Boy Advance SP, I found that there were a shed load of retro arcade compilations for it, and I went and bought a load, and that that's mainly what I use it for. 
So I figure, well, what well, the? I figure I'll um, I'll show you those compilations, and then I'm probably going to show you all the other stuff I've got with it as well. <laughs> Speaking of get well, it's not Game Boy Advance, Game Boy. I've just been watching a video, a couple of videos by um, Ninja Bear Hug, who started a series where he's collecting. I think he's going for the full collection of Game Boy. I don't know if that's going to include Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, but definitely Game Boy. And it's uh, he's done a couple of them, and they're very entertaining. I just thought I would mention that because they're great. Go watch. Um, yeah, so I compilations I've got for this. I I can't actually remember what's on them. Atari Anniversary Advance. So I'm going to stick them in the thing and actually look and see what we've got. Remember how to turn it on. Yeah, my favourite game... Well, the favourite Game Boy in my collection is, is this SP. It's the one with the front light instead of the back light, which is a little bit disappointing because the screen isn't perfect. I have been looking or had considered buying one of these. Is it called an AG101? It's the one with the proper back light. And I was watching one on, um, on eBay earlier this week. And I thought, you know... Game Boy Advance SPs, they sell quite cheaply. If, if that goes for a sensible price, I might just buy it. And it went for 60 quid, and I thought, no, I ain't spending that on one of these. So, uh, yeah. Atari and, uh, bleh, Anniversary Advance. We've got Asteroids, Battle Zone, Centipede, Missile Command, Super Breakout, Tempest, and some Trivia Challenge. So that's that one. That's a really that's one of my favourites. Namco Museum. What do we got on that? I hope I if I'm smart I'll edit all of these bits. Come on. I'm not, why is there an elephant standing on that? So we have Miss Pac-Man, Pole Position, Dig Dug, Gallagher, Galaxian. Yeah. That's on that. Namco Museum, is it? Yes. Um, Space Invaders. Uh, I don't need to look on this to know what's on here. Uh, the Space Invaders game that I showed yesterday and classic Space Invaders, which is also in my Game Boy Advance playlist, which looks great until you play it and then you find that the speed is all over the place. It goes fast, it goes slow at unpredictable times when it just shouldn't be doing that and it ruins it, which is a real shame because I like classic Space Invaders. Um, Midway's greatest arcade hits. That has got Defender, Robotron 2084, Joust, Sinistar. So it's only four, but well, I don't like Joust. Sinistar is great, but this isn't a great version of it. Uh, Robotron 2084 is flawed because you need two sticks to play that, but it's got Defender. And that's why I got this. Uh, Defender is just bloody epic. And it plays well on here. So, Sega Arcade Gallery. I didn't really say how the other games played on the other compilations, did I? <laughs> I can't remember now. So on here we've got Afterburner. It looks good, but it doesn't control well. Outrun, which is brilliant. Super Hang On, brilliant. Space Harrier. It's all right. It doesn't control perfectly, but it does control better than Afterburner. Um, it is a great compilation. I like it a lot. Konami Arcade Advance. So on here we've got Frogger, which uh, is a classic game, and I like it. But it, it, it's one of those five minutes of that, and, and I'm done. Scramble, love it, absolutely love it, and it's a really good version. Time Pilot. I didn't play that in the arcades, and I'm like, nah. Gyrus, brilliant, love it, good version, it's got the music, great. Yaya Kung Fu, don't like that, never like that. Uh, it's probably an all all the authentic version, but I just don't like it. Russian Attack, yeah, I don't like that one either, for some reason. Um, it just feels wooden and dull and boring. There you go, and that is, uh, I've forgotten, <laughs> it's Konami. Konami Arcade Advance. And uh, the final one I've got here. Pac-Man Collection. So you've got original Pac-Man. 
and you've got Pac-Man Arrangement. That's like Pac-Man with fancy graphics. Uh, Pack Attack, Pac-Mania. Yeah, not that many then really. Four games. What is missing and what I would have liked was Pat Land. I had that on some system or other and I can't remember which one it was and it just wasn't quite playing right. It was, I think it was on one of the Famiclones. Pac Land is one of those. I know it's meant to be not that great a game but I, I just kind of want to play it a bit. I played it in the arcades and was crap at it and I didn't get it but I knew it was different and I was interested in it. But yeah, this is, um, it's just cool to have a really good version of Pac-Man on the GBA, and this is a good version. The arrange, what is the arrange one like? Let's have a look. Push the A button. I don't want instructions. Okay. Yeah, it's just Pac-Man with slightly different graphics. I'll show you this one soon. I, I mean, I could do it here, but I'm not going to, because it's a Friday talk here, not a... Uh, not what Ben at Suma Karin would call a swill. See what it looks like. All those of you who've seen his comments and wonder what the hell is he talking about? Is he, is he calling this pig swill? No, it's not. It's an acronym. See what it looks like. So that's that's the Pac-Man one. That is all of my compilations for the uh, Game Boy Advance. While I'm thinking of it, I'm going to show you. I've got I've got a couple of Game Boy Advances. I thought I'd just show you them. That's the one that I use most. Um. It's a shame actually the cover's a bit scratched up. I left it in my oh, I had it in my pocket, but I I don't know if it was money or keys I had in there as well and I, I thought they were these were a bit more robust than they are. I mean the whole thing is nice and solid, but the paintwork is not. So uh, I've got a nice pink one <laughs> given to me by Pete, PSI two three six, uh with a Barbie game, which I took great pleasure in making a video of. That's actually one of my most popular videos. Actually, no, I tell a lie. That Barbie video that I play on this GBA is my most popular video. It gets the most views. Ain't that weird? I have Pete to thank for that. Thank you, Pete. This is actually Andrea's. It's a, it's a red one. It's not a it's not a it's not the 101 jobby no AGS 001 that's a, it's, it's much the same as mine it's just red I've got an original GBA I don't like these um, I don't mind the form factor the holding it like that is actually really quite comfortable but the lack of a backlight front light any kind of useful light at all the need for direct never mind light you need blazing sunshine to be able to see on this. I mean if you've got a game that hasn't got really crisp sharp graphics, if you've got one that's just a little bit muddy or lacking in contrast or something, forget it. You just won't be able to see a thing on here and that to me renders it useless. I've just got it because well it cost me a fiver. And I've got that which is the Game Boy Micro. I love these but I find them uncomfortable. Um, the screen is great um, and I love that you can just stick it in your pocket and quite often I do just that if if I'm going out or on holiday and I don't want to be lugging an SP I say lugging an SP around I mean they're so big and bulky aren't they but you know if I just want to stick something in my jacket pocket and just have one game I'll, I'll stick a game in this and it's usually something like Doom or summer and I'll, I'll, I'll it's got a little carry bag thing I stick it in my inside pocket of my jacket and forget about it basically and then you know I might be sitting around waiting for whatever and I'll remember I've got it and I've done that quite often just thought oh yeah I've got that pull it out play a game um, the only problem I have with this is that the shoulder buttons are that is really bloody uncomfortable holding it like that I mean I, I want to you can't touch the corners you've got to be pushing them there which means putting your fingers in a really stupid, unnatural, awkward position. Everything about else about it is brilliant. And if you've got a game that doesn't need the shoulder buttons, brilliant. That's the one thing that stops it being my favourite and not the SP. That and the SP will play um, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games as well. Anyway, that's, that is my, um, my, my Game Boy Advances. I'm going to show you the other games I've got for them, because I've shown you the compilations. So... I'm kind of working my way through these. I think I've shown you most of what I've got now. That sounds quite bad. 
International Karate Advance. I've done a video of that. That's knocking around on... I have playlists. Some of you, many of you, may not be aware of YouTube playlists. And especially now they've rearranged everything. But I have a playlist for every console, computer, system, whatever that I've got. And all the videos I've done for that particular system I have all grouped together in a playlist. And I can't remember how to get to the playlist anymore because YouTube has screwed it all up. But they're there somewhere. Click the videos thing up the that side. That's, I don't know. Look for it. You'll find it. Anyway, International Karate Advance. Done a video of that. James Pond 2, codename Robocod. Done a video of that. This is great. It's not... It's different to, from what I'm used to. The, the, the layouts are different from the Mega Drive version, which is the one I know the best. Street Fighter 2... What? God, I need bifocals. Street Fighter 2 Revival. That's great. That really is good. The lack of buttons on, on the GBA doesn't really matter. You know, you've got the two face buttons, you've got the two shoulder buttons. So you're missing two control buttons from what you would be used to. But it just doesn't matter. It's great. Um, Sega Smash Pack. That's got Sonic, Spinball, Echo the Dolphin, and I can't remember what the other one is, actually. It might be Golden Axe. doesn't say on... Oh, it does. I can't bloody read it. It is Golden Axe. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. Yeah. That's the Mega Drive version of Sonic the Hedgehog on the Game Boy Advance. It looks great. Um, it starts out great and then you get onto the Marble Zone and it just all slows down to a crawl. And that ruins it. It, it just... It, chronic slowdown. I don't know if it's running like a Mega Drive emulator on there or something, but it... What would be great is ruined. Uh, Metal Slug Advance. If you have played the Metal Slug games, this is cool. Um, that's all you need to know. It's Metal Slug. It's great. It's probably not as good as playing it on a Neo Geo. No, it's not as good as playing it on a Neo Geo, but it's Metal Slug, which is great. V-Rally 3 and Stuntman. Uh, V-Rally 3 is brilliant. I know it's been said that it's all graphics and no game. I don't care. <laughs> I like the way the car handles. I like the way the game looks. Stuntman, nah. Couldn't, couldn't give a monkeys. Star Wars Flight of the Falcon. Well, I did that one just recently. So you know all about that one. Iridian 3D. That's a really cool, like, fly through a tunnel, shoot stuff, gets kind of repetitive, but looks really pretty while doing it kind of game. Um, I like that. It's good for a few minutes. You wouldn't play it for hours unless you were daft. Pinball Advance. I love pinball games. I really wanted a good pinball game on my GBA. This isn't a really good pinball game. It would be. But for one thing, the people who made it are stupid. They put a, a score, is it the score? Something. Some piece of text, numbering, whatever, at the bottom. Or is it at the... It's right where you want to see what's going on, and it obscures your view and wrecks the game. They need it at the side or off somewhere, but not where it is. It's, it obscures your view and makes the game bordering on unplayable because you, you need to see as much as you possibly can and they've the trashed it. It's frustrating and annoying. Mario Kart Super Circuit. What can I say about that? If you like the SNES game, Super Mario Kart, this is as good as that but with better graphics. Uh, it's just brilliant. It, the only reason it's not my favourite Mario Kart game is because nostalgia. I fell in love with the SNES game. On a technical level and pretty much every other level this is better. It's just that I haven't played this or been playing this since my 20s which I was with the SNES game. So that one just has age on its side where that... you get the point. Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. Well, you saw the video of that recently, probably, if you were watching and paying attention. And if you didn't, well, go back and watch it and see that it's not really all that good. Doom. What can I tell you about that? Is Doom. If you don't know what Doom is, what planet have you been living on? It's good. It's surprisingly good. It's amusing to play Doom on the micro. Because it's tiny! <laughs> and, uh, 
I remember back in the 90s, was it, when Doom came out and people were rushing out to buy 486DX2s, you know, 50 megahertz jobbies, just to play this. And, uh, you know, these were super, at the time, super powerful PCs, very expensive, you know. Uh, they'd be spending £800 or something crazy on a PC to play Doom, and here it is on a tiny little cartridge, playing on a tiny little handheld. And yeah, it's kind of blocky and low res, and, well, it obviously doesn't compare with the PC version, but it's Doom, and to have that in your pocket, brilliant, plays well. Might look a bit chunky, but it really does play well. Super Monkey Ball Jr. Um, well, I did the video of that a couple of days ago. Great game. I'm crap at it, but it's fun. Um, it's got some mini games on it as well that I haven't even tried. Uh, yeah, this is one of those where you've got ten minutes to waste somewhere, or hours maybe. I don't know how long the game would last if you were any good at it. But it is one of those just pick up and play for five minutes, and it's it's great. You don't have to spend lots of time to get a lot of fun out of it. That is my Game Boy Advance collection. You've seen all my the, the, the handhelds themselves and the games I've got for it. And the compilations I've got for it. I wasn't sure where that sentence was going to stop. <laughs> yeah, so that's that. Now, I don't know if I've waffled on long enough or do you want to hear more? I was thinking, I don't... God, yeah, I was thinking. I can't remember how I came to be thinking about this, if it was someone asked me a question or if it just came to my poor fevered brain in the middle of the night for no apparent reason. There are some games that are considered brilliant and are really popular and sell really well and lots and lots of people really like that occasionally I try them and I don't like them. And I found to my cost that people don't like it when I play one of those games and say, I don't like this, Zelda comes to mind. <laughs> I got hammered for playing that and not enjoying it. But I didn't. I, you know, it's one of those, I know it's a popular game, I know lots of people like it, it the rabid fanboyism. But, you know, I, I know it's, it's, it's considered a classic. It's, well, it was the Ocarina of Time, anyway, that one. Um, and there are, that happens quite often actually, I'm kind of really picky about what games I like and sometimes games that are considered classics and are massively popular, I don't like. But I'm sure the, the same is true of everyone. And then I sort of thought, well let's turn that around. Is there a game that is considered absolutely bloody awful that I like? And to follow on from that, is there one that you like? I'm hesitating from doing open tag. <laughs> no, by all means do a video response if you want to. Is there, is there a, a, a game that is considered shite that you love? Um, what I can't do is guarantee that I will watch all of the responses. I tell you what, the, the, I'm still getting responses now from the show us your telly thing. And I'm gobsmacked at the response. And I, I've, I thought I'd caught up. I've watched about 25 video responses of that. And there are more coming in, and I haven't watched those yet, and I need to catch up. So, uh, yeah, we'll call, will we call this open tag? I don't know. If you want to do a response, by all means do. I will accept all responses. Um, I can't guarantee that I will watch them very soon afterwards, so I do try and catch up. Yeah, really a game with a really bad reputation, considered rubbish, that you like. There is one for me that comes to mind, and I actually, I really wish I could show it to you, but I can't, because I can't find it, or I haven't actually looked very hard. Um, I did find the ROM, but it wouldn't, I couldn't make it run on my Spectrum. It is a Spectrum game, and the game is called Monsters in Hell. It is a version, or a very, very, very modified, hacked about, messed about, done badly version of um, Space Panic, also known on some systems as Monsters. I know it's called Monsters on the Dragon 32, but it's Space Panic on the ColecoVision. You know the one, bitten in the ass by a strawberry. Um, Monsters in Hell on the Spectrum is written in BASIC. And 
the graphics is using the user definable graphics so the characters are tiny little I don't know how many pixels are they is it like 8 by 8 square and normally when you've got uh, uh, graphics made up of user definable graphics they, they block those together the squares together to make a bigger character well this they didn't your characters tiny and you've got all the platforms and the ladders and your characters are not animated they're just a little stick figure I think they're not animated and they move one block at a time and there you are trying to go up and down the ladders and dig holes and stuff and you've got other ones chasing you and, and it's really bloody hard I didn't have this a friend of mine had it he's now in Canada Steve Lawson if you watch it was you <laughs> you had that game I played it at your house and I liked it um, yeah uh, reviews said shite everyone well I don't know many other people who've even heard of it never mind played it but my friend Steve had it and we played it and I liked it I don't know why there was something kind of it was kind of frantic probably because it was unfair and crap but it was that I don't want to let this thing beat me even though it invariably did imagine the really crappiest version of Space Panic you can with tiny little matchstick figures on really pathetically weedy lid I mean it's one of those games my, my my memory remembers it as being better than it was I'm sure I've seen pictures of it where I'm like I'm sure it didn't look that crap but it almost certainly did. There it is. Really bad game that I like. Monsters in Hell. Sinclair Spectrum. Alright. Uh, 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 I got a shout out. Let me turn the camera around. SVT512. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> it doesn't say. And if he said in one of his videos. I haven't watched that video. He's got a few videos. What does he do? Um, video games. Quite a lot of them by the look of it. When did he start? Four years ago. With mm, pumpkins. Cool. So it hasn't always been video games. It's kind of like my channel actually. It started out on just random stuff and then I discovered video game videos were really good fun. He does a variety of different things. There are some like handheld and tabletop games here. Entex Blast. I remember Entex. They were great. Yeah, so you've got some early handheld and tabletop games here. Um, God, I haven't even looked at this older stuff. Quite a few handheld things. What, train sets? Okay. Entex Space Invaders are... Oh, I've got to take some more time to watch all of this because I haven't... I've like watched a few videos, thought that's really good. I'm going to shout him out without actually checking out everything that's here, which is what I often do. Yeah, loads of the handheld stuff. This is great. Uh, what's he doing here? Don't know. ColecoVision. So, I mean, you've got a big variety of stuff because there is... There, there are gameplay... I'm sure there are gameplay videos on it. A lot of it is looking at hardware. Um, yes, I knew there were gameplay videos. <laughs> yes, because I've watched these. But again, it's looking at the hardware as much as anything. A lot of handheld stuff. And then there are technical things like um, composite video modification on the Atari 7800, which is really useful and something if I was a little bit braver, I would do to mine. Because my RF is just shite. But I'm not confident with a soldering iron and I would almost certainly wreck the thing. It's like I can solder a couple of wires together, but when it comes to circuit boards, nah. Um, a lot of stuff is varied. He, he looks at systems and at, and at the games. Starpath Arcadia Supercharger. There's a cool thing that I nearly had back in the day but then didn't. And he, he looks at the Frogger game. His style is very... Um, he's, he's quite laid back. Um, again, no nonsense. I, I You will have noticed I don't go for the nonsense thing. There are some... I'm not going to knock anyone at all. I don't go for overstated. I don't go for the whole... Hey, uh, I, I can't really explain. There are some people who think they're on TV. This is not one of those channels. Um... Yeah, this is, it's understated, direct, to the point, laid back, you know, 
it's just a standard bloke talking about, I say standard bloke, it's actually not, he reminds me of Atari Leaf, an amount, except there is, he, this chap is from America, United States, where Atari Leaf is Canadian, and you do have the slight, you, as an English person I can tell the difference in temperament, but the, there is a real similarity here, it's like take Atari Leaf and if he was American he would be this guy, <laughs> does that make sense? I'm just sitting here looking at the, at, at the, the, there's such a variety. It's really cool. It is a great channel. I do recommend checking him out. Subscribe if you like what he does, and obviously don't if you don't. But I like what he does, and I subscribed. This is actually what happens. You know, I had the, the, a bit of a whinge the other last week, where I was like, don't ask me to shout you out. By all means, ask me to check out your channel. He asked me to check out his channel, and I did, and I subscribed. And I've shouted him out, and he didn't ask me. <laughs> I just did it, because that's how it works. But don't ask me to look at your music videos, because I'll just... Well, I won't. Anyway, yeah, there it is. SVT512. 188 subscribers at the moment. Really good channel. Highly recommended. I like it. I'm going to watch some more later when I finish talking to you lot. Because I don't get enough time to watch videos at the moment. Because I'm too busy with stuff. Stuff is good, but it gets in the way. Okay, what's coming up? I don't know, is the short answer. I thoroughly enjoyed doing the Game Boy Advance stuff. It was kind of a spur of the moment thing. Normally I do handheld videos when there are people around stopping over or whatever in the way, taking up space, animals hogging the games room or whatever. Um, it's like one of my stepdaughters is staying around. She brings her cats and her cats stay in the games room drive me mad so I can't make videos when they're in there because it's really hard when they're climbing all over you and, and just being annoying and then I do handheld games in here but I just felt like doing handheld games anyway so I did uh, but I've covered all my I've got a couple more I'm gonna do and then what I am thinking I might do some engage videos because I, I got the engage out just a couple of days ago just because I felt like it really and I've got a few games on that. I might do them. I might not. I'm kind of like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing at the moment. Um, like I said, with the, with the whole distraction of driving lessons and everything, I, I'm very unfocused gaming-wise. This arrived today from Switzerland. 64 gigabyte um, flash card. USB stick do for thing. This is going into the, my Raspberry Pi. Um, I'll like use it as a hard drive of sorts. Assuming it works, the Pi being kind of like you know, picky about what it will work with and what it won't. But if it does, I'm going to cram this with music and, and videos and stuff and then have another tinker with that. So there may be something on that coming up in the near future. Maybe. Um, I. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so I've got another SD card, which I'm going to stick a different operating system on because there's a specific media player type operating system thing. Uh, I've forgotten what it's called, but I'm going to stick that on there and see what it's like. It's kind of, what I've seen of it looks kind of like the cross media bar thing you get on the PlayStation 3, working in a similar kind of way anyway. It's like, yeah, just for playing videos and music and stuff and not really doing anything useful and computerish with. I might have, have a go with that. We'll see. I am waffling aimlessly and stuff now. Cruiser slice. What? I think it means cut here. It's got like the little scissory do for... I'm guessing that's Swiss. Made in China. Maybe not. Who cares? Shutting up. Thank you for watching.